little A's followed by numbers back up. What does that mean? <clears throat> Those are evidence IDs. Anything with an A number is the evidence ID of an actual device collected. Anything that starts with a backup and follows by another number is an iTunes backup. So what if any what items in this right hand column um, based on the coding you have here are iTunes backups? Uh, only the ones that start with the word backup. Even the ones that start with an A number are actually an iTunes or an iOS backup in iCloud. So your phone can actually be backed up to iCloud, and those are coming from an iOS backup in iCloud. Everything else is coming from an actual physical device. Um, can you just take this down for a second, Michelle, and pull up 1675, please? Defendant 1675. And um, do you recognize this chart, Mr. Eckert? Yes, I do. Without yet getting into the contents, can you please describe generally what it is? Uh, this is a chart that I prepared as a summary of my findings. Um, permission to publish defendant 1675 is a demonstrative, Your Honor. Any objection? No objection. All right, 1675 will be published as demonstrative. Um, can you please describe in more detail what the three columns you can see in this chart represent? Uh, sure, this starts to give some detail about the particular evidence ID. So for example, A001 was an iPhone X of Amber's that was collected. A002 was an iPad of Amber's collected. Uh, A10, I'm sorry, A11, 12, and 13, slightly down, are three different laptops that were collected for Amber. And do you see the IDS evidence number column? Yes, I do. Do you see the source type column? Yes, I do. And the source details column? Yes, I do. Can you please describe what those columns mean? Uh, generally, the IDS evidence number is the evidence number that we assign to a particular piece of evidence, and the type and details come from a description of that type of evidence based upon the collection set. And uh, Michelle, can you please do a side-by-side -side of 1675 and 1671? Thank you. Um, so, Mr. Acker, can you please describe the relationship between these two demonstrative exhibits? Certainly. Uh, if you look at 1671, the one on the left, you can see in the fourth column uh, the different evidence IDs where I identified the original versions of those same pictures that Mr. Neumeister had uh, specifically identified and the sources of where they were identified. So if you look at the first one, for example, the, uh, uh, the picture Neumeister referenced on page 24, uh, or I guess that's the second one, there are equivalent versions or original versions of those that do not show the software EXIF metadata field of photos. Rather, it shows the original iOS version on A001, which was uh, Amber Heard's iPhone X, A002, which is Amber Heard's iPad Pro. Uh, scrolling on down through there, you see it on A0011, which is Amber Heard's uh, laptop, same with A0012 and 13. Uh, you can see this again with the next row that's visible at the very top. Uh, uh, Neumeister identified a photograph on page 30 uh, taken on December 16th, 2015. And he was concerned about the uh, uh, EXIF metadata of that, showing the s software version of photos. The original versions of those were found, again, on A001. That's her iPhone X, A002, her iPad. And it's not surprising to me that I found all these on all the devices because that's how the Apple ecosystem works. It replicates your pictures or synchronizes your pictures across your devices when you take them. Um, Mr. Acker, you can take this down, Michelle. Do you recall Mr. Neumeister's testimony regarding what he claims of EXIF metadata modification? Yes, I do. This is a completely hypothetical scenario. Mr. Neumeister never specified any pictures with specificity that were, had EXIF metadata modification, and I, it's a hypothetical in my opinion. Um, Mr. Acker, did you form any overall conclusions in this case? Yes, I did. And what were those? The images that uh, were created in this case were included log files that allowed me to validate and verify the evidence collected. I validated and verified the log files of the uh, evidence for which I found Mr. Neumeister's original photos 
that he had concerns about, specifically the ones that had iOS in the software metadata field. Uh, I validated that those came from devices that had uh, had been had log files that were validated by me. In other words, they came from original evidence files, and in, in most instances, they came from more than one file. Um, Mr. Acker, the opinions you have testified to do, testified to today made to a reasonable degree of forensic certainty. Yes, they are. No further questions, Your Honor. All right. Cross examination, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning. You've worked with opposing counsel's law firm approximately 20 times before? Give or take, yes. For more than a dozen years? Those 20 probably would have spread out, been spread out over more than a dozen years. Okay. As you sit here today, you cannot testify that all of the photographs produced by Ms. Hurd are authentic originals, correct? Now, I can testify to the ones that Mr. Neumeister identified with specificity. Right, but there were thousands of photographs provided that Mr. Neumeister didn't testify about, right? I have no opinions on any photographs that the opposing expert has no opinions on. All right. My question to you, though, is as you sit here today, can you testify that all the photographs produced by Ms. Hurd are authentic originals? As I sit here today, I cannot opine to photographs that have not been presented to me that are not authentic originals. All right. You'll agree with me that in some instances, Ms. Hurd produced multiple versions of the same photograph, right? Yes. 